Hey, welcome. This week's video showcases me making this fancy wooden flower project. Enjoy. This was a really random project done on a whim and done in a rush because I felt the need to stick to my one a week upload schedule. It has some really random inspiration. I was sitting at a table this week with various undisclosed individuals gathered near me and I was commanded to draw a flower. This is not what I drew first but eventually I got around to trying to draw a flower, and it ended up looking more like a potato that someone had attacked with a broom. I'm just not good at drawing things. So, in order to restore my dignity and honor when it comes to creating flowers, I decided to flex my woodworking skills and tool set, and use several thousand dollars of machinery to do what I couldn't do with a singular pen. Enjoy. I used a simple outline of what looked like a rose, which I ripped off the internet, as a template. I'm not entirely certain that it was a rose, because I didn't ask it. I used this template to glue to the piece of wood, and then proceeded to cut it out on the scroll saw. Because it was all cut out of one piece, I didn't have to be super worried about staying right on the lines. As long as I got the general shape, it didn't matter. The pieces would complement each other perfectly, regardless of my precision. Some of the pieces in the center were really, really small, so that was a bit of an interesting adventure. But, no fingers were harmed in the making of this video. You may have noticed, if you are an observant pirate, that the original printout of the rose included some leafing, and so I wanted to use a contrasting wood for that. One problem I ran into is that leaves are usually green, and I didn't have any green wood in my fridge. This bothered me until I remembered that most dying flowers begin to turn brown, so I decided to make a flower that was on its way out. I had a scrap piece of walnut that had some decent grain figuring in it, so this is what I decided to use. For all you lammers out there, to the best of my understanding, grain figure is where the little strands that make up wood, think of it like a bunch of straws bunched together, the little strands, rather than being all neat and straight, decide to get all wavy and twisted and confused. This usually happens when near where a tree splits into two smaller trunks or near a large branch or defect in the tree. This makes for a very cool finished piece, as you will see here in about three minutes. I then proceeded to gather some oak to use as a backer board when I put together this flower. I decided to use oak because it contrasts nicely with the walnut and maple, and, more importantly, the natural strands of natural fibrous isoteric proteins make the wood less subject to climate change and warping and bending over time. Basically, because the proteins are within are so stable, it is far less probable that anything bad will happen. Actually, that's a lie. I picked oak because that is the type of wood that I have the most of right now and I need to figure out a way to use it all. Cutting through the center of this board because the table saw wouldn't reach took forever. At last, at last, oh my. I could run the board through the planer to get it flat and even, but I don't feel the need to show that in depth because it feels like half of this video up to this point has been me going back and forth between the table saw and the planer. I then took all the little pieces that I had cut out at the scroll saw previously, and using a pencil I marked the underside of each of them. I did this because once the paper was gone off the top, I would have no way of knowing which side was supposed to face up. Sanding paper is a great way to wreck your sandpaper, so bear that in mind. From there I was able to sort out what looked like a convoluted mess, and put it in the order it was actually supposed to go in. It was then that I realized that this may end up actually looking kind of cool. Oh. What a cool guy! I then put my guitar upside down in a vise and used it to sand the face of the backer board. And then I also used it to put a bit of a rounded edge on all the edges of the pieces. What this edge does is it creates a bit of a shadow line for visual interest, as well as hides any sort of gaps and imperfections between the pieces, and just generally makes it an enjoyable experience for all involved. You may have noticed that the piece in my hand decided to leap out of my hand and fall to the floor. This happened probably seven times during this process, 
and once again, sanding the really small pieces was interesting, and I ended up sanding my fingers a little bit too. After adding the rounded edge to all of the pieces, I put together the puzzle one more time just to enjoy the look of it. Enjoy. Oh, my love! My love! I then proceeded to begin the process of gluing all of this mess together. While you watch that, let me entertain you with two quotes about roses. Feel free to make yourself comfortable, relax, and even close your eyes as you take in these powerful quotes. Actually, don't close your eyes because then you couldn't see what is going on. This first one is from Khalil Gibran. An optimist sees the rose and not its thorns. The pessimist stares at the thorns, oblivious to the rose. And the second one is from Anonymous, who seems to have said a great deal indeed. I have encountered more quotes from him than anyone else in all the lands. True friendship is like a rose. We don't realize its beauty until it fades. Well, folks, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to and you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Recently, some people have actually been watching my videos, and I've been getting a bit of positive feedback about them, and that is wildly encouraging. Thanks for that. Until next time, go destroy some couches! Alright, see ya. Thanks for watching to the end. Have a great day.